Welcome back to Garage K. I am David and this is my 1998 Toyota Altezza that I use for drifting. There's one section at my home circuit in particular that I'm having trouble with because it's uphill. I think adding a little more power and throttle response will help, so let's simply bolt on some ITBs. I say simply because that's what I was led to believe. This is simple. Fitting ITBs is easy. So let's find out how easy. The ITBs I'll be using are from a Toyota Levin, specifically the AE111 fitted with the 4AGE blacktop 20 valve engine. These do not simply bolt on, so the first thing you will need is an adapter. Lucky for me, the second hand ITBs that I bought from Yahoo Auction included the adapter. This adapter is from SQ Engineering, and it's the one I would have chosen if it wasn't already included. The reason being that it's made of metal rather than plastic like some others. As I said, mine are used and I do need to clean them before I can do anything with them. This is incredible. It's acting like brake cleaner, like acetone. This is really, really aggressive shit. Don't get it anywhere near paint or uh, plastics. Uh, because it's actually melting the handle of this brush that I'm using. So it's just a matter of spraying carb cleaner all over the place and gently scrubbing it until it's clean. The internet says that throttle body cleaner is the way to go here, but I couldn't actually find it for sale anywhere. So I asked around and the general consensus is that carb cleaner is just fine as long as you take the TPS off first. One website says throttle body cleaner is ideal for use on carbon, while carb cleaner is capable of destroying varnish. Therefore, interchanging these chemicals can reduce cleaning efficiency. Now, I can't really comment on that, but using carb cleaner on this took ages. And here's the final result. All looks pretty good. I need to remove the throttle body and the intake manifold, so just start unplugging stuff. Remove the tower bar. One of the biggest problems with this is that I've got water lines going to the underside of the throttle body. So what I'm going to try and do is move the throttle body out of the way, leaving the water lines connected, get this out of here, and then see what's happening at the other end. I really don't know why I thought this was a good idea, but in the spirit of showing you everything, I'm going to leave this part in. There are only three. That is interesting. I did it off camera, but I actually took these bolts out already. Yeah, okay. Throw yeah. cables out. Move this cable off here move this cable off here there's a vacuum line under here i'm going to try and get off Ugh, that sucked but okay got it another one here oh i got that one too this is like maybe an iscv after you remove this you'll be left with one vacuum line running down towards the back of the car you can connect it to here this other one you can just block off this is the bracket that was in there. That's quite heavy duty. There we go. All right, so you just need to fight with that. Righty ho. Okay, so we've got our, whoa, there's a lot of oil in there. Done. Next, size it up. Um, okay, that's gonna be an issue. From this angle, you can see the throttle is hitting on this thing. This is one of the reasons I was reluctant to start this. I just knew there'd be something that, uh, that didn't line up or didn't work, didn't fit. I had a look on the internets and as far as I can tell, this actually can't be used with this setup because it hits that. I can't see what other people are using. I thought about maybe moving it to here, but then there's no mounting over here for the throttle cable, so that's not going to work. Even though, uh, like if I was to move this linkage onto this throttle body, it would actually, it does move all four, so that would work. But again, there's nowhere to have the linkage if I was to move it over to here, that won't work because these two move all four. These two are independent. I don't know why that is, but uh, that's just the way that is. You've got two options. 
block this off and move it to the to the end or something something difficult that I couldn't figure out buying AN fittings and, and whatever else or just buy the down pull throttle linkage kit from SQ engineering I've ordered it I'm waiting for it to arrive obviously the easiest thing to do is just to take this hose and loop it round onto there the next thing that I've noticed is that this is the backing plate for the filter that I've got and um, as you can see that's going to be a no because of these lines here so they're going to have to be persuaded to go in that direction a little bit this is it this is the Piper Cross C604D <laughs> that's a solid no no chance so the clutch master is actually in the way there is no way to get this filter to fit I didn't know that didn't fit it says for beams this is a beams uh, this should work but no no nothing ever does so now I need to look at either a different filtration system or move my clutch master so if this doesn't fit why use it there's a few reasons for this the internet and friends that have had ITBs before have all said the small single filter systems tend to get sucked into the engine some people I've spoken to said that the mesh filters are fine but I don't want fine I want the best several reputable shops have tested and found that there is notably less power loss with this filter compared to others I like the way this system looks and works it was expensive I already have it and I'll never be able to get my money back for it Oh, lovely that's just why didn't they use a proper sticker that you could peel off without doing that these are the trumpets I'm going with here 100 mil uh, from I think it's MRP uh, very nice piece of kit and uh, yeah they'll go on here like that like that only just fits instantly it, it comes to mind comment that someone made that Dave, you just need to get cars finished and drive them. That's what you need to do. Dave, get it done. But when shit like this happens, it's all very well to say, get shit done when somebody else is building your car. But when you're doing it yourself and you run into problems like this and there's seemingly no real like guide on how to actually do this, you're flying in blind and buying parts as you go. And if, you, if you're like me and you don't have disposable income to just do this shit, then it's gonna have to wait. It's gonna take time. It's quite frustrating. Just get it done, Dave. Like, you need to finish your car. Um, you know, I mean, I would if the products actually fit. So what I did is I've trimmed these hoses down, uh, took some length off them, and push them further in. Here's the original mounting point here, and then I've got my radio strap going to another bolt. I hate this, it's just a bolt coming from the bottom up to a nut on top. I guess later I could change that to a rib cert like I like. Now as you can see, I've got a little bit of clearance there, which I'm using this to sort of brace it against this, and now there's enough room unfortunately I couldn't get this to push on any further than it already is otherwise that might have given me a bit more space next up is going to be this it will not fit because of the back area I'll trim a piece out of the back that you won't even be able to see that's in that's in and we're not touching so that is complete but that's an hour I've been doing that for an hour because I've moved this slightly further back now it's hitting on the line for the battery to the starter motor so what I've done is I've undone that I'm going to run it underneath these two and then connect back up to the original mounting points here and here and then connect it back up again go in a they said it'll be easier they said that's beautiful that's not touching anything this one goes on here like that you 
You're gonna need a catch tank with a filter on it. It's gonna have to have a 14 mil fitting on it. You're gonna need some 14 mil inside diameter hose because that's the fitting that is on the rocker cover. Connect those two things up, bada bing, bada boom, you're done. How long would this take you to make? A bracket with four holes in it. This one here will swoop around next to that over here behind and then plug into that there. Right, that's done. That's what profile I went with in the end. Looks pretty good. Uh, yeah, and it fits. So that is that done. This vacuum block actually came with the ITBs that I bought. This hose here, it's a vacuum hose that cannot be allowed to compress, which is why it's so thick. That's a generous fit. You definitely wouldn't want this hose to be any bigger. The PCV valve is a little vacuum operated valve that is part of the emissions system. Some people remove it, but I've heard that it can cause idling issues so I'm gonna keep it. This is a 16 millimeter inside diameter hose I bought from Yahoo Auction. Well, that fits on there really, really nicely. Beautiful. The ITB adapter that I have has eight millimeter barbs on it and they match the eight millimeter barbs on the vacuum block. So I just bought one meter of eight millimeter silicon hose and cut it into quarters. So with that in mind, you really need to know what outputs are available for the adapter that you've chosen before you buy it. Then figure out what vacuum blocks are available and buy the one that fits with everything that you've got. This didn't work for my application because all of these are completely the wrong size. I also noticed this. Throttle bodies are moved rearward towards the firewall to improve hood clearance on the number one throttle. Is that going to be even worse for clutch master clearance in the Alteza? That's a very good question. Before I can bolt the vacuum block on for sure, I need to install the down pull throttle linkage kit from SQ Engineering. This kit needs to be spaced out 25 to 30 millimeters to use the OEM Alteza throttle cable. These are the bolts that came with the down pull throttle link. The manufacturer says that you should replace all of the screw headed bolts because the heads are known to strip out easily. In my kit, however, for whatever reason, four of the bolts were the wrong length. So I just went to the hardware store and bought some more. Problem solved. I have heard that the adapter has changed slightly over the years. Maybe the later ones use four shorter bolts? Dunno. In the instructions, they tell you not to use a screwdriver. I'm going to do it anyway because I'm that guy. I'll do this one at a time so as to not screw up the location of the thing or anything else. I checked all the torque settings so that you don't have to. 29, 7, 22. These are a size 5 for those playing at home. I've got a hammer underneath the floor mat, pushing on the accelerator pedal and a fire extinguisher bracing all of that. Now if I come to this side and try to push the butterflies, you can see that they don't move. Now I've just adjusted this so that uh, the cable is taut and uh, set up correctly. I found these, uh, I don't, I'm not sure where they came from, but they're, like, they're for holding your wiring harness out of the way. And I found them and they've got an M6 hole in them and they just hold the throttle cable in exactly the right position. So uh, that's a big win. This is the pipe across filter plate. And as you can see, we have a bit of an issue where the clutch fluid reservoir is in the way. To remedy this, we need to remove it and install a remote fluid reservoir. Snap this side off, and then we'll just lift it out. Just simply lift it out. Here we go. So I'll be using one of these to allow the master to accept a hose. This is from a RAV4. 
and the input is 10 millimeters in diameter. None of the remote fluid reservoirs I could find had a 10 millimeter output, so I used an eight millimeter to 10 millimeter hose adapter. The next step is to remove this area of the master cylinder using the incorrect tools. And that's what we've ended up with. As you can see, it's much smoother now. Here's the new pin. Getting that pin in there is proving to be really difficult. So what I'm actually using is one of these in there like that. I hold it like this and then hit it with this hammer here. Seriously recommend nobody do that. Take that off, do it the easy way. My trifecta of zip ties here looks a little bit janky, but I mean, at the end of the day, the zip ties are easier and it works. It's important to get EPDM hose because brake fluid has been known to eat other types of hoses. The inside diameter of the hose required for this is 9.5 millimeters. Okay, I need to plug this on. There we go, that's on. Put on a hose clamp. Put on a hose clamp. I want to put something on here to hold the hose up out of the way. Now it's time to take care of the wiring that's left over from removing the standard equipment. I have to take all this tape off. And I need the white and red, the brown, which are on the end here. I don't need any of those wires except for these two. That's my throttle position sensor. So if we can get all those to tuck together like that into one harness, you won't be able to tell it's there. That's the idea. Install a link air temperature sensor. Right, this has got to go on like that. Snap that off, feed it through to there, load it into the crimper and crimp it. Do the same for the back. Next, snap this off, feed it in, load it into the crimper, give the old crimp, fold these legs in, give that a squeeze too. We push this in, like that. There we go, we have an air temp sensor. I'll show you how to set this up in the link software in a later video. Let's talk about the Alteza TPS. The part number is 89452-30150. Here's my quad throttle bodies on the beams. Please note that the part number on the TPS is the same. Now because it's the same, I didn't need to change the wiring at all. This is the standard wiring plugged into the standard TPS. Now to set this up, I just pick roughly the middle and then teach the endpoints to the Link ECU. I'll show you how to set this up in the Link software in a later video. All modern day cars need a computer to run the fuel injection. So of course the Alteza has one. The standard computer, AKA ECU, will not run the ITBs. So I'm installing a Link ECU. To do this, you remove the computer from the car. Unplug that, unplug that, unplug that, unplug that. Link is very, very adamant that you do not touch any of the pins because you could give the thing uh, static electricity damage. We won't do that at all. Now we lift this out and there's the ECU out. Open it. Remove the circuit board. Install the Link circuit board. So we need one hole for the map and then one hole for this. And if we're doing any of this can shit, we need another hole for that. I went and got some four millimeter hose, which is what you're gonna need. That one goes through there. That one goes through there. Now we just gotta screw the lid back down as per the instructions. This is my modified ECU. And then reinstall it in the car. Like so. After this part, the rest of the install is up to you. I chose to run the USB all the way into the car with the car's wiring harness for easy laptop access, but you don't have to do that. Just run the hose for the map sensor out of the box somehow, connect it up to your vacuum block, put the lid on, and you're done.